We're gonna get started on some uh, basic math using the concept of equilibrium uh, constants. We're gonna go ahead and get going with the reaction quotient Q. If a uh, if you are given a concentration uh, pressure combinations of things for reagents in a reaction. Uh, you can plug those things into an equilibrium constant expression uh, if they give you all those numbers, and that will generate this number we call the reaction quotient, or Q. So uh, keep in mind that not all reactions are at equilibrium. You might have an, a reaction that is reversible and it can go back and forth, but it hasn't yet reached equilibrium. This is what we use the reaction quotient for. Um, so if you want to know whether the reaction is at equilibrium yet or not, um, you can just plug that uh, those numbers in, calculate Q, and then it's pretty simple. If those numbers spit out the equilibrium constant, then yeah, it's at equilibrium. Then uh, if they don't, then no, no, it's not at equilibrium. So basically plug in the numbers into your K expression. If it spits out K, it's at equilibrium. If it doesn't spit out K, it's not at equilibrium. Not too bad, but wait, there's more. We can also do a little bit more than this. We can actually answer some other questions by finding the reaction quotient. First of all, if the reaction quotient turns out to be a number smaller than K, then that tells us something. If the reaction quotient that we plug in with the numbers they give us is less than the K value, then the quotient is too small. Now keep in mind that quotients are numerators divided by denominators. So think about that. If your quotient is too small, you need more numerator or do you need more denominator? Well, putting numbers, putting things adding to the numerator uh, was going to make the number bigger, adding to the denominator is going to make the number smaller. So if it's too small, we need more numerator. Where is the numerator? Is that products or reactants? It's products. So uh, if you have a Q that ends up smaller than K, then boom, you know you need to make some more products. Um, and then conversely, if Q is bigger than K, if you plug in all those numbers and you get a number bigger than the K value, then you know that the quotient is too large, so you need a larger denominator, so you need more reactants. So that's going to run to the left. It's going to favor the reactant side in a situation like that. So this might be a little bit general and vague. How about if we do a concrete example to kind of bring it home? So here is a reaction. This is a reaction that at uh, 448 degrees, the reaction between Hydrogen and iodine is a reversible reaction producing hydrogen iodide gas. <laughs> and we have a Kc of 50.5. So here's what we're going to start with. So we're going to start with a, a jar, a 2-liter container. And we're going to just start by charging this 2-liter container with uh, 0.02 moles of Hi, uh, half as much, or 0.01 moles of H2 and 0.03 moles of I2. And uh, so let's go ahead and figure out what Q is going to be with this situation. So uh, let's go ahead and start out with a Q or K expression. Uh, we know that the it's going to be HI, the product side first on top, and that's going to be squared. And we're going to divide that by H2, and we're also going to divide it by I2. So there is our K expression. All we need is numbers for each of these things, and then we can plug them in. Uh, you gotta be careful though, because these, uh, we wanna plug in molarities here. These are not molarities, these are moles. So as long as we have a one liter container, we can use them. Oh no, that's a two liter container. Oh, doggone it. So now we're gonna have to do some really complicated math. We're gonna need to find the molarity of this. Well, the molarity is the moles, which is 0 0.020, divided by the liters, which is two. So, hmm, let's see, 0 0.010 molar for that one. Uh, and uh, so the HI is 0 0.01 molar. The uh, uh, 
H2 is 0 0.005 molar. And I don't know if I can, yeah. And then uh, the I2 is 0 0.015 molar. So you gotta be really, really careful when you're plugging these things in that you're using molarities if it's a KC. Uh, they'll often give you grams or moles with a KC, uh, hoping that you can remember that you gotta convert it into molarity. So remember that molarity is moles divided by liters. The volume has to be in liters for molarity. So let's go ahead and plug these numbers into this expression up here. Um, by the way, I didn't mention this, but we do have a K value for this. That's what we're going to use once we have our Q value. So um, I guess I should say that we're trying to calculate Q here, not K. We're trying to find what the quotient is with these numbers to, and then compare that to the, the K value to see what, uh, what direction it's going to go or if it's at equilibrium. So HI, that's our uh, first number here. It's 0.01. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to worry about sig figs for now. And then uh, I'm going to square that. And then uh, on the bottom, we're going to take 0 0.05. And we're going to take 0 0.015. And, oh, and of course, there's my mistake. Uh, I, had point, I had two zeros before the five here. So that should be 0 0.005 there. So let's go ahead and plug those correct numbers in. We got 0 0.01 squared divided by 0 0.005, divided by 0 0.015, and we get a, K, a Q value of 1.3. So 1.3 is our Q value. So now let's go back. Q uh, is 1.3. K is 50. So Q, 1.3, is less than K. So this number is too small. So if we put these amounts of things into the pot, we will see that they are going to need to run, uh, need to make, it's too small, so we need to make more products, more numerators to make the number bigger, so it's going to run to the right. So if we put these amounts of things in, it's going to proceed to the right. All that to get a one word answer to the right or to the product side. Now. Uh, one final problem here, kind of, uh, it's only related in that it's a kind of a math problem involving Ks, but it's pretty straightforward. We haven't done a problem like this yet in class, so uh, we're going to use K to find an equilibrium concentration. So let's say you know some of the concentrations and not others, but you do know it's at equilibrium. So uh, here's how we're going to do that. So here's our reaction. We have nitrogen. This is the Haber-Bosch uh, process. We have our nitrogen gas and uh, hydrogen gas in equilibrium with ammonia gas. And we have that tiny K because this is a hard process to make happen. And we are told that at equilibrium, so this isn't like the last problem. The last problem we were told amounts, but we were not told whether it was at equilibrium or not. This time we are told it is at equilibrium. Uh, and that at equilibrium, the partial pressures of uh, hydrogen and nitrogen are given but they want us to find the equilibrium concentration or actually partial pressure here, it's a Kp, of ammonia. So we're gonna start out by writing the K expression. So Kp for this reaction is gonna be the product in H3. You know, technically you really only use brackets for molarities, but I use them for everything. Uh, over the uh, nitrogen, which is not raised to any power, and over the hydrogen, which is raised to the third power because of that. And so there's your expression. And now um, the thing is, what you'll notice here is they actually gave us this number. They gave us this number. They gave us this number, and they're asking for this number. So this is just a plug and chug. This is just plug it in and solve. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Kp is 1.45 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that equals uh, the NH3, which I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find. I'm just going to go ahead and call that X. You can call it NH3. You can call it whatever you want. And then uh, on the bottom, the N2 number, they gave us that. That's 0.432. 
and the H2 number is 0.928, but we've got to remember to cube that. All right, and so there it is. We just got to solve for X. So what we're going to do is we're going to first get the X alone uh, by multiplying out this denominator. So uh, we're going to take uh, these numbers, uh, multiply these numbers to the right and to the left. So they're going to cancel out on the left, and on the right, we're going to be left with 1.45 times 10 to the negative fifth times 0.432 times 0.928 cubed. And that's going to cube. I don't know. I did not use parentheses, so it's going to keep just the 928. And that gives me x squared is equal to, uh, I'll just call that 5.8. So oh, 1 times 10 to the negative 6th. And, uh, but that's not the answer. That is the answer squared. So we're going to take the square root of the answer. And there you go. The amount of ammonia here is uh, 2.24 times 10 to the negative 3rd atmospheres. And there you go. That is how you would... Uh, do a problem like that.